Hey guys, Mr. Wilson here. Today we're going to continue on with standard form and really talk about um, choosing standard form and slope intercept form. At the end of this video, you should be able to explain when to use each method in graphing, and you should be able to write equations in standard form from a word problem. And we'll start off just um, graphing some problems. Okay, so they ask us to graph each of the following lines. And in this first equation, we have 6x minus 3y equals 12. Okay. This is given to me. This is in standard form. I can tell because x and y are on the same side. And when that happens, then I can just find the x and y intercept. And so I'm going to do that. x intercept here, 6x equals 12 divided by 6x equals 2. My x intercepts here at 2, 0. I'll do the same thing with the y. Negative 3y equals 12 divided by negative 3. y equals negative 4. So down here, 1, 2, 3. All right, and then I'm going to draw a straight line through. Straight line through. All right, and that's my first line. Okay, so using standard form help me on that one. All right, number dose. I'll do the same thing. Cover up the y. I have x equals negative four. That is already done. So one. 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 0. Cover up the x. I have 2y equals negative 4. Divide by 2. And so y will equal negative 2. 0, negative 2. Those are my two points. Uh oh, drop my ruler. Okay. And now going through that line, those two points to make the line. Okay. All right. Not too bad so far. Hopefully, see how those really nice. All right. Number three. We have five x plus two y equals eight. Okay. So I'll cover up y. I have five x equals eight, and I can see a problem happening because as I solve this, I'm going to get x equals eight fifths. Okay. And I know that there's not really a way that I can graph 8 fifths very nice okay so I'm not going to graph it in this way okay what I have to do now is try to graph it another way and um, since standard form didn't work I'm going to put it in slope intercept form okay and that means I have to solve for y so I have left after this 2y equals negative 5x plus 8 and then I'll divide by 2 So I have y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 4. All right, and so now this is a slope-intercept form. And so I always start with my intercept, which is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then my slope tells me go down 5, go right 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 1, 2. Do that again. One, two, three, four, five. Right, one, two. All right. And now here's my line. So a little bit of bump in the road there because my standard form didn't work. Uh, oops. Let me try to get a good line between all those. Okay, because my standard form didn't work, but we're there. Now. Okay. And then I can try to do the same thing here. Um, so I'll cover up here. I have 3x equals 45. 5 by 3. x equals 15. And there's an issue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Not going to be able to make it all the way to 15. All right. So hopefully there's a way for me to graph it, and I think I will probably be able to do that in standard, I mean slope intercept form. Okay, so that means I'm going to solve for y, subtract 3x from both sides, move it up here a little bit. So I have negative 9y equals negative 3x plus 45. I'll divide both sides by negative 9. And so y will equal negative 3 divided by negative 9, which will give us positive. 
one third x. 45 divided by negative 9, which will give us negative 5. Right? Okay. And so, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 is my y intercept. 1 third is my slope. That means I go up 1 over 1, 2, 3. Up 1 over 1, 2, 3. Okay, and you'll see how slowly this is going. It's supposed to hit at this line at 15, and it'll probably make it there, but it'll be way over here, way off our graph, and so we won't try to do it that way. Okay, and so here's my line. I could go, remember, down one, left one, two, three, because that's the same as going up and to the right. Okay. Or at least equivalent to going up and to the right, not the same. All right. And here's my line. All right, so we spent a few minutes here just graphing different lines. And so uh, the question at the bottom, just to kind of bring this home and make it a lesson, uh, which form were each of the four lines in? And hopefully you notice that they all started off with x and y on the same side. And so they were all in standard form. Remember, just to review, hopefully you guys don't need it. But just to review, standard form is ax plus by equals c. When in this form, we typically use um, this method to graph. And that's um, graphing by using intercepts. I guess I could just say using intercepts. Okay, we typically graph using intercepts, and that's what we did for numbers one and two. But it was difficult for numbers three and four, and it was difficult because for number three, um, the x-intercept was a fraction, and we can't graph fractions very well. And for number four, the x-intercept was too large. It was off our graph, and so we couldn't graph it. So what did we do in those cases? Well, what we did was we changed it to slope-intercept form. Whenever we're having difficulty with um, graphing, slope-intercept form should be our fallback, Okay, because we should be very comfortable with it. And usually we'll find a way to make that work. Okay. All right, flipping to the back. So we talked about changing the slope-intercept form when we need to, but we should be able to use um, standard form when it's advantageous for us or when it helps us. And so let's look at a word problem. And try to find, and we're going to find a way to make this work um, and show you how standard form works with word problems. So Greg can make $10 per hour mowing lawns and $8 per hour at McDonald's. Greg wants to make $200 so he can have some spending money for the weekend. Write an equation to represent this situation. Let x uh, equal the number of hours mowing lawns and y equal the number of hours at McDonald's. Okay. So here we go. He can make $10 mowing lawns. So he makes $10 per hour mowing lawns. He's going to do that and he might also work at McDonald's which will add to his total. Um, and when he works at McDonald's he can work he can make eight dollars an hour at McDonald's. Eight dollars per hour Y. And he wants it to equal two hundred dollars. He wants to make exactly two hundred dollars. In this problem, what is the x-intercept? Remember, we can find that by covering up y, rewriting the problem and solving. So 10x would equal 200. Divide by 10, and x would equal 20. And what does it mean in this problem? In this problem, that means if he only mowed lawns, he'd spend $20 or 20 hours, sorry. If Greg only mowed lawns, it would take 20 hours. Remember 20 hours to um, 
make two hundred dollars, not to mow all the lawns. Okay. What is the y-intercept? Okay, the y-intercept, remember, we find that by covering up x and solving y. So we cover up x, we have 8y equals 200. Um, that would be 25. 5 by 8. And so y equals 25. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, this means if Greg only if Greg only uh, worked at McDonald's McDonald's it would take 25 hours okay all right it was rainy this week so Greg was only able to mow for four hours how many hours does he need to work at McDonald's to reach his goal? All right, so remember, this is kind of testing us or reminding us that this equation should work for the points. Each point in the line is a point where they make $200. So what we're saying is, Greg, mowed for four hours. So this equation now, instead of it was 10x plus 8y equals 200, but now it's 10, 4, because x stands for the number of hours he spends mowing plus 8y, because we don't know how long he has to work at McDonald's, or had to work at McDonald's, is 200. And so what we have is 40 plus 8y equals 200, or 8y equals, 8y equals 160, and then so y will equal 20. So if he mows for four hours, he would have to um, work at McDonald's for 20 hours. All right. And so now, let's look at a different situation. Let's say he's working at McDonald's for five hours and he's fed up and quit. How many hours of mowing lawns does he need to reach his goal of $200? So again, we, we use the same formula here. But now, 10x plus 8, y is no longer a variable because we know that y is 5. You worked there 5 hours and that's as much as you could take. Well, um, that means 10x plus 40 equals 200. And so, um, let's go up here, 10x equals, subtract 40 from both sides, equals 160. And so x would be 16. He would need to work 16 hours mowing lawns in order to make his $200 goal. Okay? All right, so just restating that our equation um, can be used to find out all the places where the, the combinations where working at McDonald's or working at mowing a lawn gives him $200. And for any equation that we make for a line, um, any two points that make the equation true are, are options for us. Okay, in college I had a job where I had to load softener salt into people's call, cars. Salt bags came in 50 pound and 80 pound bags. A customer one day asked for a ton of salt, literally a ton, 2,000 pounds. Okay, write an equation to represent all the possible combinations of salt bags this customer could receive. So here we go. We know that there are two types of bags. There are 50 pound bags, so I'll just say 50x. There are 80 pound bags, 80y. So x for every 50 pound bag you got, 80, or y for every 80 pound bag you got. And, we, and he needed a ton, 2,000. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, now we can graph this equation. Remember that graphing this equation, actually let me label my axis here, because this is 50 pound bags, 50 pound bags here, the number of 50 pound bags, and this is actually the number of 80 pound bags here. All right, sorry guys, my camera froze for some reason. So we have 50 pound bags and 80 pound bags um, to get a ton. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the x-intercept 
by finding the number of 50 pound bags, um, I'll do 2,000 divided by 50, and that gives me 40. Okay, so you have 40 50 pound bags. Um, otherwise, if I gave them all 80 pound bags, I have 80Y equals 2,000 um, to find that by itself. I would be 25. That would be our y-intercept to 25. Now, notice that we have these um, our graph, but we don't have 40 spaces. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 spaces. Um, I'll do 30. Nope. I'll do 4 each. Okay. So I'll make each of these spaces worth 4 so that I can fit my space, my stuff here. 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. Okay, so my x-intercept is here at 40. My y-intercept at 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. Okay, I'll make each line worth 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 18, 22, 4, 26. Okay, so somewhere in between here. All right, and now um, this will be my line. Connect all that. Connect all that right there. Okay. All right. And so these are all the possibilities. He could get 40, 50 pound bags, or he could get 25, 80 pound bags, or he could get any of the combinations that happen on this line. Okay. The customer said that he, when he unloads the salt, he wants to make as few trips as possible from his truck to his software in his basement. Assuming he carries one bag at a time, which combination would best suit the customer? So, which one allows the fewest visits, fewest trips? Well, it makes sense that the 80 pound bags. 25 80 pound bags. Okay, that's that's the fewest bags as we can have. As we do that, as we um, move from that, notice once we get to 22 bags, he has to have four 50 pound bags. And so that comes to 26, so it increases each time after that. Okay. Um, as I was loading his truck, I realized that I was going to run out of 80 pound bags before he received this ton of salt. I ran out of 80 pound bags after giving him 15 bags. How many 50 pound bags do I need to give the customer in order to meet the order? Okay. And so, um, just like our McDonald's problem, we'll say, okay, um, I already know I gave him 15 80 pound bags. 80 times 15. stay true to the equation. So we have 50x plus 80 times 15 equals 2,000. And so 80 times 15 is 1,200. So 50x plus 1,200 equals 2,000. And that means 50x equals 800 divided by 50. And that will give me 16. So 16 bags is where I need it. Okay. All right. Um, there we have it. Using standard form to make story problems and also plug it in to make sure that you know the combinations are all along these lines. Even though we only find the x and y intercepts, remember that the whole line that connects this are true values. These work. All right. See ya.